Hello, and welcome to the Youth Tobacco and Nicotine Prevention Training. This presentation was developed in response to local demands from schools and parents to learn about the dangers of electronic nicotine delivery systems, or ENDS, such as e-cigarettes, vapes, and jewels. Today's PowerPoint presentation will cover these topics. The goal of this PowerPoint is to share some information on what ENDS products are, why ENDS products are a problem, current statistics around young people using ENDS products, and what is being done to combat this rise in ENDS use. These are the objectives we will cover during this presentation. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to increase knowledge of ENDS and potential harms, describe nicotine's effect on the body, identify resources for further learning and support, and gain confidence sharing this information with others. While this presentation focuses primarily on ENDS products and e-cigarettes, we also want to remind everyone of the other tobacco products, such as traditional cigarettes, snus, smokeless tobacco, pipes, hookah, cigars, and dissolvables. The Surgeon General's definition of ENDS is battery-operated devices that allow the user to inhale an aerosol, not a harmless water vapor, containing nicotine, flavorings, and other chemicals. Electronic nicotine delivery systems, or ENDS, refers to e-cigarettes, vapes, vape pens, jewels, and can also be referred to by many other names, but we will primarily use the term ENDS or e-cigarettes in this presentation. There are three primary parts to most e-cigarettes. These include the battery, the atomizer, and the cartridge. The battery is the power source for the device. The atomizer is what heats the solution, aka the e-liquid, and transforms it from liquid into an aerosol. And the cartridge holds the liquid, which is what is heated. In a 2018 National Youth Tobacco Survey conducted by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, over 3.6 million kids described themselves as current users of ENDS products. Being a current user means they use the product within the last 30 days. This is a significant increase from the previous year's survey in 2017, where only 2.1 million kids reported using ENDS products. Due to this dramatic increase in ENDS products among our youth, the FDA Commissioner and the U.S. Surgeon General both declared youth electronic cigarette use an epidemic. Here are some of the press releases announcing the statements from the FDA Commissioner and the U.S. Surgeon General. This slide shows data from the National Youth Tobacco Survey, which we talked about on the previous slide. The graph on the left shows the number of high school students who reported current e-cigarette use between 2017 and 2018. Again, current use is defined as using e-cigarettes within the last 30 days. As you can see, there has been a 78% increase in the number of students who have reported using e-cigarettes between 2017 and 2018. The graph on the right shows the number of current e-cigarette users among middle school students, which rose 48%. While most youth are aware of the dangers of traditional combustible tobacco, they pursue, perceive vaping or jeweling as a much less harmful or an even harmless activity. Many youth do not know that e-cigarettes almost always contain the highly addictive drug nicotine. Han Leek invented the first successful commercially sold e-cigarette in 2003, and the e-cigarette first appeared in the U.S. in 2006. In a couple of slides, you will see how the e-cigarette and other electronic nicotine delivery system products have changed through the years. Walking through this timeline, you can see that the e-cigarette is a fairly new product, having only been invented in 2003. In these past 16 years, a multitude of countries, governing bodies, nonprofits, and organizations have expressed their views and research pertaining to these products. CASAA is the Consumer Advocates for Smoke-Free Alternatives Association, and they have created a thorough timeline of e-cigarettes. In 2015, Juuls were first introduced into the U.S. market. Since then, Juul has become the most popular ENDS product. Juul accounts for 78% of ENDS market share. Looking towards the future, in 2020, ENDS manufacturers will be required to submit an application to the FDA 
to evaluate public health benefits and harms of their products, including lists of products, labeling and advertisements, ingredient lists, and required warning statements on packaging. This is an ad for one of today's hottest products. If you don't look carefully though, you might miss what it's advertising. It's this little thing, and it's called Fuel. Fuel looks more like a flash drive or computer device, but it is really another kind of e-cigarette. Since it launched in 2015, Juul has taken over about 70% of the e-cigarette retail market share. It's now worth about $16 billion, and that success is often attributed to its sleek design. But the same features that make Juul a well-engineered product also make it attractive to young people, many of whom have never smoked before. And that has people worried, because devices like Juul might be designed to help smokers get off cigarettes, but they're also addicting a new generation to nicotine. So what makes this one e-cigarette so different from the rest? Answering that question starts with what you see on the outside. Juul is an e-cigarette, but it really doesn't look like one. It looks like a tech product, and it's tiny. That allows smokers to get a nicotine fix without having to worry about social stigma, but also allows young users to consume nicotine inconspicuously without having to worry about who sees them. Going to school, having this in your pocket is a lot better than having, like, like something this big that looks kind of like a lightsaber. You know, you could kind of jewel anywhere in discreetness. That discreetness is a big shift for e-cigarettes. Since the first patent in 1930, designs haven't been very subtle. The first generation of e-cigarettes mimicked the shape, size, and colors of traditional cigarettes, sometimes even with a fake light-up tip. The second and third generations focused on larger and more customizable devices with longer battery life and big plumes of vapor. Then came the Juul, a stripped-down version with no buttons, no big plumes of vapor, and no complex refilling or recharging. And it comes in a variety of bright colors that set it apart from other e-cigarettes, which made it look like a tech product that young people were already familiar with. That is why people call Juul the iPhone of e-cigs. And that similarity makes sense. Juul's founders met at Stanford Design School, and one worked as a design engineer at Apple. They created the first e-cigarette that looked more like a cool gadget and less like a drug delivery device. This wasn't smoking or vaping. It was Juuling. Yeah, like how grandmas have iPhones now, it's kind of like a normal case of jewels now. Because it looks so modern, we kind of trust modern stuff a little bit more, so we're like, we can use it, we're not going to have any trouble with it, because you can trust it. The tech um, aspect definitely helps people get introduced to it, and then once uh, once they're introduced to it, they're staying, because they're conditioned to like all these different products, and then this is another product, and it's just another product, until you're addicted to nicotine. And that is where it gets tricky. A 2017 study found that 25% of 15 to 24 year olds recognized the jewel in a photo, but the majority of them didn't know that it always contains nicotine. It's easy to trace that information gap. You just have to look at the ads. When you look at Jewel's marketing today, you find video testimonials from adult ex-smokers. My name is Lauren. My name is Brandon. My name is Carolyn. My name is Aman. I'm 38. But when Jewel first launched, their marketing looked a lot different. When you put those ads alongside old cigarette ads, the similarities are pretty striking. Both marketed relaxation, sharing, travel, freedom, and sex appeal. It's now illegal for cigarette brands to use these kinds of suggestive advertising themes. But for e-cigarette manufacturers who had products on the market before 2016, those strategies are still unregulated. That's why a brand like Candy Pens can be promoted in DJ Khaled music videos, just like tobacco corporations used to pay stars to smoke their cigarettes on screen. But compared to cigarettes, jewels are a lot easier to start using. Typical e-cigarettes have between 6 and 30 milligrams of nicotine per milliliter of vape liquid. One jewel pod packs in 59 milligrams. That's three times the nicotine levels permitted in the European Union, which is why Juul isn't sold there. But here in the US, e-cigarettes don't have the same restrictions, even though we know that nicotine dependency can prime developing brains for future substance abuse disorders. The company says that Juul's nicotine content is about as much as a pack of cigarettes, though tobacco experts say it's likely more than that, and Juuls have a patented system for delivering that nicotine. Most e-cigarettes use a potent version of nicotine called Freebase that gives users a strong hit. But Juuls vaporize a liquid made from nicotine salts. Those salts allow nicotine to be absorbed into the body at about the same speed as regular cigarettes, much faster than most e-cigarettes. But unlike Freebase nicotine, which can be irritating, 
Nicotine salt goes down smoothly, so Juul packs a bigger nicotine dose into a much more pleasant hit than most devices on the market. And that has public health officials worried, because the U.S. almost beat nicotine addiction among kids. As cigarette smoking among those under 18 has fallen, the use of other nicotine products, and especially e-cigarettes, has taken a drastic leap. In April, the FDA demanded that Juul submit documents on its marketing and research. A group of senators sent a letter asking Juul to stop using flavors and designs that appeal to children. And there are now three lawsuits alleging that Juul contains too much nicotine. In response to the concerns, the makers of Juul have pledged $30 million to combat underage use. Merchandise and marketing materials now have big warning labels on them, and the company is developing lower nicotine pods. The trouble is, there's still a lot we don't know about the long-term health impacts of e-cigarettes. Juul, like other e-cigarettes, might have set out to design a solution to a public health problem, but in a lot of ways, their product has created a new one. It is important to note that e-cigarettes are not producing water vapor, but are in fact an aerosol with chemicals. This graphic also shows that these chemicals are not only going into the body and lungs of the person inhaling the product, but that these chemicals are also affecting those individuals and pets around them. While some of these ENDS products do not produce a visible smoke cloud, they do expose others to secondhand and even thirdhand emissions. The U.S. Surgeon General warns that e-cigarette emissions can contain harmful chemicals, including nicotine. Secondhand smoke is smoke inhaled involuntarily from tobacco being smoked by others. Third-hand smoke is residual nicotine and other chemicals left on indoor surfaces by tobacco, smoke, and ENDS products. So what is nicotine? Nicotine is a poisonous substance that is produced by the tobacco plant, whose purpose in the plant is to defend against insects. Nicotine is the addictive part in ENDS products. Nicotine is highly addictive and can be toxic. It primes the teenage brain for addiction, harms brain development, and affects learning, memory, attention, and can cause behavioral problems. The adolescent brain is developing until the age of 25. The younger a person starts using nicotine, the more likely they are to become addicted, and the harder it will be for them to quit. So it is no wonder why 9 out of 10 adult smokers started smoking before the age of 18. ENDS products have changed and grown so rapidly, it is hard to keep up with the newest products and to always recognize them. It is important for each of us to be familiar with the drug's new nicotine delivery systems, because we can't stop it if we can't spot it. Since ENDS have been in the United States, there have been four main categories of ENDS. One, sigalikes, looking like cigarettes. Two, vape pens, bigger than sigalikes with refillable liquid tanks. Three, mods assembled from basic parts or by altering existing products. And fourth, a pod mod, a small black electronic cigarette that takes the shape of an elongated flash drive. Part of the evolution of these ENDS products is the change in the nicotine content. For instance, on average, a combustible cigarette has 10 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine, whereas a Juul pod contains 59 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine. E-liquid is the flavored liquid found in ENDS products. E-liquid almost always contains nicotine. The ENDS industry is currently unregulated, even regarding nicotine content. One cannot be sure how much nicotine, or any other chemicals, they are being exposed to. For example, a study that looked at e-liquid nicotine content found that samples labeled 18 mg per milliliter of nicotine actually ranged from 11.6 to 27.4 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine. This study also detected nicotine in 91.4% of samples labeled as having 0 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine. In the popular brand Juul, these cartridges that hold the e-liquid are called Juul pods. As we said before, Juul pods contain at least as much nicotine as a pack of cigarettes. Besides nicotine, Juul pods contain ingredients that we know are harmful, like benzoic acid, glycerol, propylene, glycol, and other chemicals like natural oils, extracts, and flavors. While the use of combustible tobacco has decreased among our youth, the number of teens who are using e-cigarettes has increased drastically in the last year. 
According to the NIH, youths who use e-cigarettes are approximately four times more likely to use conventional combustible cigarettes than non-e-cigarette users. According to the Truth Initiative, 47% of young people use Juul or e-cigarettes are using because their friends use them. We'll talk more about social norming later in the presentation. It may not surprise you that this is the most common reason that young people use e-cigarettes, but what is especially concerning is that 25% say the reason they use e-cigarettes is because they are less harmful than other forms of tobacco. According to a survey by the National Institute of Health, here is why young people think e-cigarettes are less harmful. Look at what they think is in these ENDS products. Over 60% of teens inaccurately reported that e-cigarettes were mostly made of flavorings. In our teenage years, hormones course around our bodies, causing dramatic physical transformations. But out of sight, our brains are undergoing equally monumental changes. Ones that profoundly affect how we behave and react to the world around us. We all intuit that teenagers have a different view on the world than children or adults. But what's not always obvious is that the way teens see the world is not simply a choice or an attitude. Instead, it's the consequence of a changing brain that's right on schedule. Who they are right now is biological and inevitable. To get a sense of the teen brain at work, we're running an experiment. With the help of my graduate student, Ricky Savjani, we're going to rig up volunteers of different ages to a machine that measures stress levels by gauging changes in their sweat glands. Then, we have them sit in a shop window to be gawked at by passers-by. Okay, cue the curtain. First up, an adult. Luisa's stress response seems to be holding about steady at a pretty low level. It's clear that she's responding to people being there but her stress response is simply not going up. But in the same situation, the teen brain responds very differently. Oh wow, that's a big response. I have to auto scale her heartbeat because it's gone up so much. Her galvanic skin response is really high now. It just keeps going up. Uh, it suggests she's stressed out. Hi, Xander. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good, good. The more that he averts his gaze, the higher his stress response is going. So this is presumably his response is to pretend like he's not there. Describe how it felt. Awkward, weird, pretty much. It was different. Having people just like stare at you and not knowing what they were thinking. So, why the big difference in response between the adults and the teenagers? The answer involves an area of the brain called the medial prefrontal cortex. becomes active when you think about yourself, especially the emotional significance of a situation, to yourself. As one grows from childhood into adolescence, the activity in this area rises, peaking around 15 years old. Now, social situations carry a lot of emotional weight. Social norms are actions believed to be normal, or typical, or appropriate within a group. 
This is important because we know that while all people belong to various groups that subscribe to social norms, these tend to be particularly important to young peer groups who are trying to establish their identities as both individuals and members of social groups. With respect to vaping, this is an activity that, as we've discussed, most young people see as very low risk. It is likely hitting the sweet spot for young people testing boundaries of something they know they should not be doing, but yet can do without excessive risk, unlike smoking, which they understand to be very risky. It is particularly important to recognize these patterns because when we consider the language that is often used to describe trends in youth vaping, we encounter words like epidemic and unprecedented, we have to be careful about what language we use when we talk to young people because we run the risk of perpetuating vaping as normal social behavior. Consider that about one in five young people are regular ENDS users. We tend to focus on that one individual as if they are the majority of the equation, when in reality, the majority of young people are not vaping. This happens in part because of something called the vividness effect. Behaviors or events stand out in our minds when they have more influence on our beliefs about the world than the actual data in front of us. For example, having a fear of flying but being perfectly comfortable taking a car ride. The stories of horrific plane crashes, which are actually very rare, stick with us. When we see news story after news story, and when we hear kids say that all of their friends are vaping, we get caught up in the hype. But all that serves is to reinforce that vaping is an inevitable activity that all young people will participate in. A young person who believes this may feel isolation and pressure to conform to what they see as the social norm. So while we don't want to undercut the seriousness of youth vaping, we don't want to oversell it either, because the healthy choice is actually the norm. It is a fine balance to be sure. We don't want to discount a student who comes to us saying they don't want to use the bathroom at school because other kids are vaping in there, but we also don't want to paint the picture that this is an inevitable reality. We can try using the three D's to address vaping. Deglamorize. Make vaping less attractive. Share facts with young people. Allow them to react, do their own research, and make up their own minds. Young people will know if you are exaggerating or lying. Delegitimize. The Truth Initiative has been hugely successful at this in exposing the tobacco industry. Share things like, none of these devices are approved as cessation devices by the FDA. And as of now, they are completely unregulated. And denormalize. Most young people aren't actually drooling. It's not as many as you think. The tobacco companies are using many of the same tactics to sell ENDS products that they use to sell combustible cigarettes, such as marketing to youth. For example, Juul claims that their products are only intended for adult smokers, but the company's actions are reminiscent of the tobacco industry's same old tactics and tricks where their products and marketing are meant to entice, engage, and then addict new customers, particularly youth, with an all-new high-tech spin. These are some examples of the tobacco industry tactics. Flavors. There are vanilla, cherry, chocolate, blueberry, even flavors from popular children's cereals are available. The use of flavors in cigarettes was prohibited in 2009, but flavored cigars and other tobacco products are still made and sold with candy and fruit flavorings. To encourage impulse purchases by adolescents and to create future long-term customers, the tobacco and vaping industries price their products cheaply. Some vaping starter products have been sold for as little as $1 each with coupons. They're sold in many places, including convenience stores, gas stations, and corner stores. Big Tobacco has muddied TV shows and movies by placing their products in cartoons, normalizing their appearance to kids and the tobacco industry calls the youth their replacement smokers because tobacco companies callously and aggressively advertise to youth knowing that they are killing their current customers. Tobacco and nicotine companies have found ways to use social media influencers and celebrities to market their products to young people with YouTube promoted websites, Instagram posts and videos, and cloud competitions. When talking to your students, try to be aware of ENDS products and trends of use. Things are changing constantly, but do your best to keep up with the products, trends, and language. On social media, searching for Juul or vaping will connect you with many active accounts. Remember that you don't have to know everything, but share with your child what you do know. 
Make sure you get this information from credible sources. Kids will know if you're lying or exaggerating. An example could be, I heard that jewel pods have as much nicotine as a pack of cigarettes. Encourage young people to do their own research. As many of you are educators, you are very familiar with the importance of using and finding credible sources. If you suspect a student is vaping or if they are caught vaping, try to find an opportunity to talk to them to understand their reasoning and assess their interest in quitting. A good conversation starter for this might go, what are the good things about vaping? What are the not so good things about vaping? If a student is caught vaping in school, try to remember that this is most likely not an act of defiance. If a student can't get through the day without using their jewel, they are likely addicted to nicotine and should be treated with empathy. Our advice for parents is similar. Look for golden opportunities to have conversations. When you spot a person vaping on television or when you see an advertisement at a gas station, ask open-ended questions like, I heard that jewel pods have as much nicotine as a pack of cigarettes. What do you think that means for people who use a jewel? Rather than, I better never see you with a jewel in your mouth. Preventing use among young people is important. Here are policies and laws that limit access to and use of tobacco products that work. Here is an overview of the laws that exist in Virginia. HB 2384. This new bill went into effect on July 1, 2019. Previously, schools were not required to ban use of all tobacco products on school property. The new law makes the rules consistent across schools in Virginia. There is no tobacco use allowed on any school property or at any school event by anyone, student, staff, or visitors. This includes off-site activities like a football game or field trip. HB 2784. Virginia became a state that banned sales of and possession of all tobacco products to people under age 21 on July 1, 2019. There is an exemption for active military. HB 1881. This law requires that curriculum covering the health and safety risk of using tobacco and e-cigarettes be made available to all schools. The Indoor Clean Air Act. This law was updated in 2009 to ban tobacco use in restaurants and workplaces. And lastly, smoking in vehicles. This law makes it illegal to smoke in a vehicle with a child under the age of 8 present. It should be noted that this is a secondary offense, meaning that an individual cannot be stopped for this offense alone. Just a reminder that there is a toolkit online that you can refer to. The toolkit includes three pages of clickable links and resources. Visit tjhd.org to read and download the toolkit. We are viewing the toolkit as a living document, so we will make edits on it and update it as new information and new resources are made available. That is why we encourage you to view this toolkit online, as opposed to printing it, to ensure you are always viewing the most recently updated toolkit. We are so excited to have the Tobacco and Nicotine Toolkit, as well as this PowerPoint, available for each of us to use. In an effort to keep up with the demand of local and even statewide requests for presentations, we have created an online request form. The request form is for any group, school, PTO, etc. to use to request a presentation by one of us. The presentation and slide deck request form can be found on the TJHD website right by the Tobacco and Nicotine Toolkit. Here is our list of references in order of when they appeared in this PowerPoint. The sources are also listed in the notes section of each PowerPoint slide. Most of the information presented today can be found in the online toolkit. If you have any questions, please email us at cvilletfcc at gmail.com.